Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have Teslin Figaro with us, and we got a special guest in the building. 2024 Republican president, uh, presidential candidate Larry Elder. Welcome, brother. Thank you so much for having me. It is an honor. How you feeling? I feel good. He, he does more than that, though. I mean, he's a radio host. Yeah, radio mean, host for 40 years. Author, uh, TV author, host. Author, New host. York Times bestselling list. Uh, I've got a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mm -hmm. Corner of Hollywood and Vine, Southeast Corner, just saying. Okay. Oh, I didn't know and, you had a star uh, in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah, man. yeah, about a handful of radio guys do, and I'm one of them. Yeah, I think it's you, Elvis Duran, Angie Howard Martinez. Stern, yeah. Big Boy. Oh, Ar Ar Angie, Angie, Angie Martinez. Martinez. A guy named Arthur Godfrey. Okay. Yeah. So now, let's, let's, let's jump right into it. Why are you running for president? Well, I'm running as an America First mega guy, and we have an America First mega guy running, obviously. Uh, so the question is, what do you bring to the table? You say MAGA. MAGA. Okay. And the answer is, I bring a lot of issues to the table that I feel our side is not talking enough about, if at all. For example, the number one social problem in America, by far, is the epidemic, not of COVID, but of fatherlessness. 70% of black kids today enter the world without a father in the home, married to the mother, up from 25% back in 1965. Now 25% of white kids enter the world today without a father in the home, married to the mother. And the stats are clear. Even Barack Obama once cited them. If you're raised without a dad, you're five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. What's happened? In the mid-60s, with I think the best of intentions, a Democrat named Lyndon Johnson launched what he called the War on Poverty. And since then, we have incentivized women to marry the government and incentivized men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. You know, when I tell, say this to people, the pushback I get is, well, uh, there are lots of things that are going on, systemic racism, poverty. Uh, here's the problem. If you look at a young black male age 10 to 43, that's young to me because I'm 71 years old, a young black man in that demo is 13 times more likely to be murdered than a young white man, same demo. Young black man, real young, 19 and under, the number one cause of preventable death is homicide, almost always at the hands of another young black male. Uh, young, same demo for whites, the number one cause of preventable death is unintentional deaths. That includes drug overdoses, mm -hmm. automobile accidents, drownings. Uh, it's not until they get to number four that uh, death is the cause. In America, 60% of the shootings, the robberies, and the homicides are, are committed by black people, often against other black people. Of the homicides in this country, half of them are black victims, almost all killed by other blacks. Uh, how do you explain that uh, if it isn't for the absence of fathers? Are you prepared to say black people are just genetically inclined to commit more crime? I doubt it. And the go-to reaction often is, is poverty uh, and systemic racism. Here's the problem. 1940, when there was blatant racism, this is before Brown versus Board of Education, before the Civil Rights Act of 64, KKK was still alive and well, 87% of blacks lived under the poverty line. Now it's about 14%. You can't blame it on poverty. You can't blame it on racism. It is the breakdown of the nuclear intact family, and neither side is talking about it. The left doesn't talk about it because they caused it with the welfare state, and our side does not talk about it because if you're white, you'll be accused of dissing single moms who are heroically raising these kids, or you'll be accused of being a racist, or if you're black, you'll be accused, as I was by the LA Times, of being the black face of white supremacy. Nobody's talking about that. I am. What are the reasons, uh, you know, if your statistics are right, what are the reasons that you think fathers aren't in the home? As I said, it's because uh, in the mid-60s, Lyndon Johnson launched what he called the War on Poverty. In Charlemagne, literally, they sent social workers door-to-door -door in the inner city. I remember this. Mm -hmm. Advising women of the availability of welfare provided there was no man in the house. It created an economic incentive for women to marry the government. Same thing with whites. In 1965, 8% of whites entered the world without a father in the home married to the mother. Now it's about 25%, also up threefold. Look at census data, 1910, 1920, 1930, in places like Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, Philadelphia, a young black kid was slightly more likely to be brought into a world with a father in the home married to the mother than a young white kid. We have incentivized this kind of bad behavior, and it's had a disproportionately bad effect on the black community. Let me ask you a question. What do white people do wrong, Larry Elder? What do you mean, what do white people do? I'm not worried about white people. I'm worried about what, 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 what's going on with us. But if, there, if, there's, if there's systemic racism in this country, which I, we know I, it I, is. No, no, I, I don't say there is. You say there is. I don't believe that. Oh, you don't believe there's No, there racism? used to be, obviously. Mm. Tell, me, tell me what you think the number one systemic example of systemic racism is in America. Oh, man, there's so many. Just give, just, just give me the most important one, you think. I, at the top of mind, I'll probably maybe say maybe mass incarceration. Maybe. Really? 
Um, in during the Great Depression, when 50 percent of black adults were unemployed, you didn't have this kind of mass incarceration. It's the breakdown of the family. There's I'm a direct. Not, I'm, not, I'm not going to. I I agree with the family part. I, I'm a black man who is the father to his children. I'm right. a happily married right. black man to a black woman. So I'm never going to argue with that part. Mm-hmm. You know, but I just feel like. Everything is black, 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 black with you. Black is wrong. Black people do this and black people do that. And when I ask you what white people do wrong, you said you're not worried about white people at I'm all. I'm talking about the, the damage, disproportionate damage going on in the black community. For example, look at these uh, smash and grabs that are taking place in Los Angeles where I live. There's a suburb called Glendale where uh, at a mall recently, a mob of 30 to 40 people, they had masks on, but one guy got popped. He was a black. And I think most of those who were doing this were black. Uh, and in recent years and times, there have been a number of these uh, in places like Chicago, places like, like New York. If I were involved in something like that, Charlemagne, I grew up with a dad, uh, just as you're uh, raising your, your own children, I would have been more afraid of my father than I would about the cops catching me. These kids are afraid of neither. They don't have a father in the home. Cops are demoralized. They're pulling back. Uh, their manpower is short. Uh, and as a result, you tell a bad guy you're less likely to be caught, convicted, incarcerated, crime goes up. They may be criminals, but they're not stupid. Mm-hmm. When you say, what do white people do? I mean, this is a country that has struggled mightily to, to get over its, uh, its historic racism. Uh, there was a civil war. There was a big civil rights movement. Uh, this is the only majority white country that's ever elected a black president, let alone reelected a black president. The three biggest cities in America are New York, Chicago, L.A. They all have black mayors, even though no city has a majority of black population. The president of Harvard is a black female. Martin Luther King in 1966, Charlemagne, gave an interview to the BBC. This is two years after the Civil Rights Act of 64 got passed. And he said, I'm amazed at how many positive changes there have been in America in the last two years. Why, if things keep going like this, we could have a black president in about 40 years' time. Mm -hmm. Do the math. Right on cue, Barack Obama elected 2008. He didn't say there'll be a black female president of Harvard, and there has been. He didn't say they're going to be black CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and there have been several. He didn't say the percentage of the House would equal the percentage of black people in the population, and it does. He didn't say the three largest cities would have black mayors, uh, and they do. He, he didn't say the largest and most prestigious organization, uh, organization of doctors, the American Medical Association, would have two black presidents, and there have been. He didn't say the most prestigious organization of lawyers, the American Bar Association, would have two black uh, presidents, and they have. He said president, mm-hmm. meaning at that point, I can feel that I've reached the mountaintop, which is a speech he gave right before he got assassinated the day before. And now we act as if Barack Obama never even got elected. And we're still talking about mm-hmm. systemic racism. It's not fair. It's wrong. And you're discouraging black people from working hard. 1990s. Okay. Mr. Elder, a quick question. Let's just remove the word racism, since that seems to be a word uh, that that triggers you know, a, a conversation down the water hole. Let's just focus on the word system. Uh, okay. You mentioned that the system uh, was the one that discouraged. And again, we have no problem uh, with agreeing that the the family, the the black family, should certainly uh, has some room for some improvement. But let's just focus on system. Room for you said improvement. The system. Well, we're not going to go down that water. You, we're okay. not going to go down that water hole. Let's get to the question. So the question is: You said that the system encouraged uh, black women to be single mothers, correct? I said the welfare state. Yes. The welfare, the system. So who's okay. in charge of the system? Who was in charge of the system? Well, it was Democrats that passed it. And who were Democrats? Were they black or white at that time? Well, at the time, majority of black people were Democrats, as the majority of black people are Democrats now. Not the voters. I'm I'm talking about the system. Remember, the main idea is the word system. Who was in charge of the system at the time, the the Democrats at the time, the system? I'm just going to Charlemagne's point about white or black. Was it white Democrats in charge of the system or black Democrats in charge of the system? Well, if you're prepared to say that Lyndon Johnson did this viciously with an intent to destroy the black family, I disagree. He did it with the best of intentions. Uh, no, and, 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 if you, asked, and if you look at and if you look at the New York Times, which is left wing, the Washington Post, which is left wing, they cheered all of it. this. Right. And what I'm asking was it white people. So I'm going to ask again in case my mic's not coming through clearly. Was it white people in charge of the system or black people in charge of that system that helped break down the black family? It's a simple. Yes. Just a simple question. White or black? Well, you didn't have to go on welfare unless you voluntarily chose to go on welfare. The inducement was put there. Uh, by Democrats, uh, by, the, Democrats by, by the left. Correct. Okay. White well, Democrats, well, most correct. black most black people were Democrats, and they voted for these white people. Not too. voters. I said, who's in charge who's of the system? Charge? Well, who puts who's the, in charge? Who, who puts them in charge? Was Lyndon Johnson <laughs> white them, or black? Who puts them in maybe charge? Maybe that'll well, help. You. Fine. Lyndon, Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson was white. Thank you. Okay. 
But but if your argument is that the reason he did it is because of racism, then I disagree. He did it because of that's not my argument. I just asked you a simple question: Was he white or black, Charlemagne? And you know, uh, Mr. Elder, you said uh, you talked about the the smash and grabs, right? And I Mm -hmm. find that interesting because you know when you see the mass shootings that happen, majority of those people are white males. What do you what do you think about that? Actually, if you look at the percentage of of whites in America, which is sixty percent, the percentage of mass shooters is under that. The percentage of people that commit hate crime is under that. The percentage of people who are serial killers is under that. Black people are 13% of the population. We commit a greater percentage compared to that no, of you mass shootings. We talked about the smash and grabs, though. So I was saying, since you're using that as an example, I'm saying, well, what about you know the mass shooters that are usually one, white males? One, one, one yeah. more time. They, they are usually white males because 60% of the country is, is, is white. However, they underrepresent in terms of the number of mass shootings. Uh, about 50% or so of the mass shootings in this country are committed by white people, even though white people are 60% of the population. They underrepresent. We overrepresent when it comes to hate crime, when it comes to mass shootings, when it comes to serial killings, when it comes to robberies, when it comes to virtually every category of violent crime. We overrepresent. So what do white people do wrong? I'm going to keep asking you that. Cause I wanna, well, like, you, well you, do, it, seem, it, seem, it, seems, it seems to me, rather than deal with, with what's going on, the pathology that's going on in the inner city, mm-hmm. you want to blame, you want me to talk about how bad white people are, which I don't think is a pretty, pretty, particularly productive thing to do. Well, I think, I'm, no, I'm talking, I think, I'm I think talking, there's a cause and effect, but you know, if we can't talk about the cause, which I believe is systemic racism and white supremacy, the FBI says... The well, I just one, told you, if it's systemic racism, please explain to me how it was when Americans... America really had systemic racism in 1940. Eighty-seven mm-hmm. percent of blacks lived under the poverty line. Again, this is during uh, Jim Crow era. My father is from Athens, Georgia. Grew up in Jim Crow. My mom is from Huntsville, Alabama. Grew up in Jim Crow. Eighty-seven percent of blacks lived below the poverty line. This is before Brown versus Board of Education. Probably you did, you did no not choice. find you did not find these kind of black on black crime. Probably because we had no but choice. But they still were they living the, below the poverty line, though, sir. I'm sorry. You're forgetting the fact that they they were still living below the poverty line. You're picking and choosing, saying this was good, but this was bad. Okay. The bottom line, they end b- between the poverty line. But let's move forward. Well, on well let me. Can I, can I just you, add, can I just address that? In 1940, eighty-seven sure. percent of blacks lived under the poverty line. 1960, mm-hmm. that number had fallen to 47%. That's a 40-point drop in 20 years. That's the greatest 20-year period of economic expansion for black people in the history of America. Again, well before Brown versus Board of Education, well before the KKK uh, uh, imploded, uh, well before we had race-based preferences. Why? Because it was rare for a black kid to be raised in a, in a family without a father in the home, uh, a strong belief in Judeo-Christian values, a belief in patriotism, even as America wasn't applying these values to black people, obviously, uh, and a belief in entrepreneurship. All those things are now under assault by organizations like Black Lives Matter, Charlemagne. Black Lives Matter had on their website an attack on the nuclear family. Uh, the founders are self-described Marxists, trained Marxists. Marx wanted to dethrone God, was an atheist, and Marx did not believe in capitalism, uh, let alone entrepreneurship. All the things that made black people still survive in virulent racism are now under attack by organizations like Black Lives Matter. All of those things have always been under attack by white supremacy. You can go back to things like whether it's the Tulsa race massacres, like every time black people do create these systems that are our systems and we are the entrepreneurs, it seems like white supremacy every, finds a way to destroy every, it. Every time, look, the Tulsa massacre, within about five years, that whole area was rebuilt. Uh, it was not even called the uh, the Black Wall Street until after it was rebuilt. And it was rebuilt, by the way, by black people without one dime of government money. Yeah, but who I, I destroyed will... it to begin with? It was right wait, racists who destroyed it. No question okay, about it. Sure we've had we've had race riots. But so so have Japanese. So, what, so, oh, hold on, hold on, so hold on, you do agree hold, that there's racism? I'm just so confused. You know, Mr. I, I never even came close a to saying. I never came. Ago, I never came close. I never, I never came close to saying there was no racism. You just said you don't think it's systemic racism. Not anymore. Obviously, there was. We had something called slavery. System, we had something called but that was a Jim Crow. That destroyed black. It was, hold on, sir. That was I'm a sorry? system that destroyed. That was the system that destroyed Black Wall Street. It's the same system right now that's not even wanting to pay those same living descendants. Because I know your position on reparations, but those same living descendants of Black Wall Street. Okay. And then you move, and then you go on to say that this the system, the quote unquote system, is also trying to destroy President Trump. So I'm just so confused on do you believe that the system can destroy or not? You you pick and choose, sir, and that's what's so confusing to me. You just said it wasn't racism. Now it is racism. When I- when it was time I said, to, to I, build said it back, I said it wasn't, there was no racism. I'm I said so it wasn't confused. systemic racism. Let's talk about. Uh, so what, uh, are you, wait, wait, are you wait, just wait, hung up on can the can words? Can, 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 can I just make what this is, make this point, yeah, Charlamagne? Yeah, please, uh, let's take Chinese Americans. Uh, Chinese Americans were the first ethnic group to be excluded with an immigration act in the late 1800s. Uh, they had riots against Chinese uh, in L.A. in San Francisco. There were laws that prevented Chinese Americans from participating in the laundry business. Uh, I'm in California. California, of course, rounded up Japanese Americans during World War II. 
There were laws that prevented Japanese uh, Americans from owning farmland. The average Japanese American household has a higher per capita income than the average white household. The average Chinese American household has a higher per capita income than the average white household. How does that happen? It happens because of a strong belief in family. It is rare for a Chinese American or a Japanese American kid to have uh, to have a child outside of wedlock, and a strong belief in education and a strong belief in entrepreneurship. These are the kinds of qualities that make people you successful. Can't, you can't blame everything on, on having a fatherless family, right? Because I didn't say blaming everything. I know, but, but that's what you're saying. You're saying a strong community. But no, you, you said that's what I just Asian said. I didn't say but that. You talk about the Asian community. Asian community is easy for them to get loans for entrepreneurships. It's easy for, easy for them to get loans for houses. You look at our community. Okay. If you really, if you really want to talk about our community, right? You look at the schools in our community. Some of our schools are the worst, right? But they, you agree. They, with that, it, yes or no? Absolutely, which right. is why, which is why, Wi-Fi, which, which is why, which is why one, of the, one of the reasons I'm running for president is for school also, choice. Also, would you say that it's in, in our community? It's, it's, systemic, by it's also in our community's heavy food deserts. There's nothing but fast food places that are just killing and destroying that. Would you say that's, that's true? Systemic too, by the way. Boy. Uh, you, you mentioned say this, I'm just asking uh, a question. Okay, you said a number of things. I just addressed one of them about sure. loans. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 1965, uh, Barack Obama, who was in in private practice, uh, joined a bunch of other lawyers to file a class action lawsuit against Citicorp, which, ho- which is headquartered here in New York. 186 uh, black people were applying for loans for mortgages and they didn't get them. And they accused Citicorp of engaging in racism. Mm-hmm. Citicorp said, no, it's not racism. You have poor credit scores and we want to make sure we get our money back. Uh, Obama joined a bunch of other lawyers and they sued uh, Citicorp in a class action lawsuit. And Citicorp said, okay, to hell with it. Gave them all loans. Uh, and uh, they followed them all up. Daily Caller did a few years later. Almost all of them lost their home. Several of them filed for bankruptcy. One of them even said, you know, when you don't qualify for a loan, maybe we shouldn't get a loan. Well, duh. It wasn't true that black people were not getting loans. Uh, plus, there are all sorts of uh, black-owned community banks around the country, and it turns out the turndown rate when you apply for a loan at a black b- a community bank was even higher because they had less capital and they couldn't afford to loan money to risky people. It is just not the case that the reason for the plight of the black community is because people were not lending money to them. It's just not true. That's not uh, true. I, but yeah, hold, not hold, true. hold on one second, Charlamagne. What's, you, you, what's, what's you, not you true? You're bringing back facts of 1965, right? Let's talk 2023, right? I said 1995. 1995. We'll talk 2023, right? My son will be successful in real estate and successful in buying a house. You know why? Because because, his father because owns of you. His house. Because his of you owns a house, right? But my father because and of you his and the drive because and his, of you and, and the drive you put into him. not own houses. Because, 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 because of you and the drive you put into him. We're not going to have a conversation. You're not, you're not even appreciating what you've done to your son. I'm just asking you a question. I just let you speak and I let you talk. Okay, I can talk. We have a conversation. But when we talk about it, right? It's harder for our community to get loans, right? And not just because of poor credit scores. It's because of of where the areas are. You talked about the Asian community. A lot of the Asian community have their own banks and they're able to process and get their own banks. There's not too many African-American branches that are able to give out money. So that's one. Then let's talk about getting grants for schools. They're not even giving grants for schools at the rate that they're giving grants for white people. And let's talk about when they talk about entrepreneurship. They are giving so much money to these white and Asian kids and Asian people doing it and a, a thousand times less than our community. Will you, you agree to, to any of that? No, no, I don't. I don't agree with virtually any, what you, any, any of what you just now said. The, the turndown rate for a white applicant for a mortgage is higher than the turndown rate for a Japanese or a Chinese applicant for a mortgage. Now, are you telling me that banks are discriminating against white and in favor of Asian Americans? It's because their credit scores are better. They often live below their means. They save more, even when they're making the same amount of money than black people do. If you have poor credit score, you're not going to get a loan. Period. End of statement. But, even but even the, the head of even, even the head of Urban League, even the head of Urban League, a black man once said that if you have poor credit score, you're not going to get a loan. End of Her, statement. Uh, sir, That's, sir, yes. let, let's just okay. When you were talking about crime, you you weren't prepared to talk about this proportion. You talked about how it was more black people that was doing it, and then you talked about how we're the smaller, you no know, other population. The same applies also to the loans. It's more white people than it is black people. You seem to pick and I'm choose. Talking about the rate. To, I'm talking about right, the rate. Whatever it is, the bottom line is it's more white people than it is black people. And so, if more black people are getting not getting loans disproportionately, it seems you'd only want to apply the disproportion. Uh, to the conversation when it benefits your I'm talking not, point, I'm not sure you understood. Which is why they say, I'm not sure you understood. No, understood. I'm not sure you understood my point. That's why I mentioned in 1995 when 186 black people who were not getting loans filed a class action lawsuit claiming that they were denied the loan because of racism. City Corp said, okay, here are your loans. The reason I wasn't giving you the loans is because we're afraid you weren't going to be able to pay them back. I'm not talking Fa- about fast this, forward, sir. they weren't able to pay them back. 
which proved Sir, the city I'm court point. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking. About I know that. you're not. Because inconvenient. I'm talking about. I'm talking about your response to Envy when he said, when you said more white people get approved for loans. Since you like I'm numbers, about I, I, I said, Washington Post said, said black Americans have the highest denial rates for purchase and refinancing loans, according to Home Mortgage Disclosures Act. Because of their credit black score, and all credit scores are the same. Fifteen percent of Hispanic loan applicants were denied, compared with about eleven percent of white and ten percent of Asian applicants with same credit scores and that's Washington Post since you love numbers so much and I know you do love numbers that's coming <laughs> from not, the Washington Post that's 2023 not 1995 I can, I can show you a study that that's, says the opposite let me ask you a question uh, yeah. Mr. Elder, uh, Donald Trump Rudy Giuliani and I'm pretty sure everybody who just caught a Rico with him in Georgia they all had fathers and they still ended up in jail how did that happen mm -hmm. <sighs> nobody said well, no, nobody said if you have a father you won't go to jail I, nobody said if you didn't uh, have a father, you were going to jail. My father never. But guess knew what you did say, Mr. Elder? I'm sorry, may, may, respectfully. May, 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 may I answer? No, may I answer his question? Guess what you did say? May I answer his question? No, let, let him finish his statement, Ted. Okay. My father never knew his biological father. He got thrown out of the house when he was eight, when he was 13 years old. Eighth grade dropout, Jim Crow South, Athens, Georgia. Uh, fast forward, my dad cleaned toilets, two full time jobs cleaning toilets when I was growing up. Went to night school to get his GED, and then after that, he went to night school to learn how to operate a small restaurant. Uh, age of 47, my dad saves his nickels and dimes from his job, starts a small restaurant near downtown L.A. Fast forward, he retires in his 80s. He owned that restaurant. He owned property next door, plus the house that's still in our family. Not too shabby for somebody who did not know his biological father. It's not a death sentence. You still have choices. It's just much, much more difficult to raise a child on your own. Even Tupac Shakur said, I know for a Tupac. fact. Tupac. Tupac, excuse me. <laughs> I, know for, I know for a fact, uh, had I had a father, I would have been more confident. I would have been more disciplined. End of quote. Well, how did all those white men end up in jail when they still had fathers? The Trumps and the Giuliani. I'm just ask, asking the question. Like, how did they end up in jail? Because, uh, because, because, because some people commit crimes. No, sir. Uh-uh. Stop. My apologies for interrupting you earlier. I just couldn't stomach the answer that I knew you couldn't were going to say. Your couldn't stomach the answer? Yeah, I couldn't stomach because your actual answer to Trump uh, being what was happening to him with the indictments, you actually said that the system was doing it. You said there was a two-tier system. This That's is right. your words. That's right. That it was a two-tier mm -hmm. system. So when it came to Trump, all of a sudden you now believe in this systematic thing that's happening to Trump. But then when it happens yeah, but it's to not, black people, but it's not about the race. It's not no, about I didn't race. ask you that. I asked you. Remember, I told. Remember, I made it easy for you, and I took race out of. It. Remember, I said I'm just talking about the system. I'm just well, talking about well, the if system. You, if you want, so if, if you want, if you want to ask me whether I believe Donald Trump is being treated the same way as Joe Biden and is being no, treated the same way that. as Hillary you Clinton, didn't. all of these Mr. people Elder, are white. All these you, people are white. There's a double standard. Well, you Mr. Said, you Elder, said, you, you said didn't that, hear you my said, question. You said that they, you didn't hear my question. You said some people commit crimes, so you do believe that Trump, Giuliani, them, they committed a crime. I don't know. But you just said some people commit crime. I right? said some people committed crime. I didn't say Donald Trump committed a crime. If you ask me specifically whether I believe Donald Trump committed a crime, well, no, I don't. I, asked I don't you specifically about those people and why they ended up in jail. And they, they all got fathers. Well, Donald Trump is not in jail. Well, he got indicted. Yeah, he got indicted. That's, 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 that's a far cry from being in jail. Mm. Well, well, why did he get indicted? Well, he got yes, arrested. Sir. Is what I'm well, saying. Well, he, he got He's going to get arrested. Uh, he got He's been arrested. He, he got indicted, in my opinion, because uh, the. Uh, DOJ has a double standard. They let Hillary pass, for example. She clearly violated the Espionage Act by having an unsecured server in her basement. Uh, she paid for the Steele dossier. Uh, she, so destroyed, was it the she, she destroyed 30,000 uh, uh, emails that were under subpoena, and she got a wrist mm -hmm. slap. Uh, and Donald Trump is now being indicted, I think, for the fourth time. It's, hey, it's unfair. Right, black, people, black people were telling y'all how corrupt the FBI is for a long time. And, and the FBI has been corrupt. Uh, there was COINTEL, uh, the, uh, right. the FBI. J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover also uh, wiretapped MLK under Robert Kennedy, the, a, a Democrat uh, attorney, X, attorney general, Malcolm X. Lots of things. Right, right. And I find it interesting how the same people who criticize the FBI historically are, are now defending the FBI because they're going after Donald Trump. Oh, we're not defending the FBI. I, I didn't we say just, you were. I said oh, some of the same people. We're just looking and saying, damn, finally. But what's your thoughts with, with, with Florida is, is, and you see that uh, they're trying to take our history out of these history books and not trying to teach our history? What's, what's your thoughts? I, I find it interesting that the Democrats are the ones complaining about Florida. This is a party of slavery, party of Jim Crow, the party of the KKK, the party of the Southern Manifesto, the party of, uh, of Dred Scott, the party that I said earlier destroyed the nuclear intact family, and the party that is opposing school choice. And now they want to lecture Florida on um, making sure the proper history of, of slavery is taught. I don't, I don't know anybody who's defending slavery. Anybody. Not, not, well, Ron not, not Ron DeSantis. Like, he's Ron not defending. He, people, be people benefited from slavery. Actually, you're talking about one well, line. Actually, uh, you're talking actually, about one actually, line in about 127 pages of, of, uh, of, <laughs> of, uh, of the study. And it is a line that was repeated almost verbatim in the associated, uh, uh, in the advanced placement 
African-American course that the uh, DeSantis administration refused to use because of all of the sexual stuff that was in it. It's basically the well, same sir. thing that was in the advanced placement African-American courses. And now oh, wow. because it's in that, all of a sudden uh, the the uh, governor is accused of somehow defending slavery. He's not doing anything of the sort. What did you think well, about sir, that? Well, you, sir, you were actually one that defended slavery. Uh, in your comments, you said that, like it or not, slavery was legal it in was. response to reparations. So it, it's you that was defending slavery, correct? Uh, defending it and saying that it's illegal are two very different things. Slavery, well, was, sla- was, slavery, was, slavery, was, slavery, unfor- slavery, unfortunately. Well, that was your response. That was your response. That was your response into if reparations should if reparations well, I, should happen. So let, your let, response I, to that was like it or not, slavery was legal, and one would think that that was a defense on those who. Well, were what you would think it was a defense, but but, yeah, but, it, but, it, but it is not a defense. Unfortunately, slavery has been part and parcel of human history from the very beginning. Asians enslaved Asians, whites enslaved whites, blacks enslaved blacks, Native Americans enslaved Native Native Americans. This is a culture, the Western civilization, that had a revulsion against it. We had a civil war against it. Uh, And we ought to applaud ourselves for doing something about this. Uh, This is a flawed country. It's moving forward. Uh, It's becoming more perfect all the time. Today, if you are uh, born and raised in America, if you finish high school, presumably one where you can read, write, and compute at grade level, which is why I support school choice, don't have a kid before you're 20, get married first, get a job, keep a job, don't quit it until you get another job, and avoid the criminal justice system, you will not be poor. And if you don't follow that formula, there's a good chance you will be. You know, uh, the first GOP debate is coming up, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you didn't qualify, and I saw you right. Well, you didn't say, you, I, I've not I've not yet not qualified. It's not until August 21. Oh, okay. Well, I saw you writing the op-ed that the Republican National Committee has rigged the rules of the game by instituting a set of criteria that right. is uh, so... Uh, onerous, what is it? Onerous, o- onerous, onerous, and mm-hmm. poorly I mis- designed. I mispronounced Tupac, so you mispronounced onerous. That's so, right. so, 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 so even. <laughs> you are really petty, Mister. <laughs> and you said, <laughs> and, po- and, you said <laughs> and, po- and poorly designed. That only establishment <clears throat> and billionaire candidates are guaranteed to be on stage. Mm-hmm. Explain to us why that uh, system hurts people. Well, I ran for governor of California. I got 3.5 million votes. It seems to me that made me credible. The RNC is requiring us to have one percent or forty thousand individual donors. In 2020, the DNC required you to have 1% or a certain number of donors for reasons that I don't quite understand. The RNC is requiring you to have have both of them. One of the candidates in this race is a multimillionaire. He's offered a $20 gift certificate if you give $1. Another one is offering a free, air quotes, country western concert if you give $1. Another one is giving you a commission uh, if you are a prospective donor to go out and get other prospective donors. It seems to me that corrupts the whole process. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way, Charlemagne. I'm asking people to support me and go to my website, LarryElder.com, and give me at least $1. If I get $1 from 40,000 individuals, I will be up on that stage in Milwaukee on August 23. And when I get up there, game on, hold my beer. So why is this system, so would you, is this system holding you back? Ahead, would you say it's a system holding you back? I, I would say it's unfair. It seems to me er, this early, uh, the, the voters ought to decide this. I mean, in 2016, there were 17 or 18 Republican candidates. Now there's 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, somehow, some way, our republic survived, and we could survive with 13 candidates. I don't know why they have all this rule to, uh, to, uh, to uh, eliminate certain people at this yeah, point. Those systems, but, but rather than, those systems can hold you back no matter but, how but rather, hard you work, but, right? But, no, I'm going to say, but rather than whine about it, my goal is to get on as many shows as I can, like yours, mm-hmm. urge people to go to Larry com. give at least one dollar, even if you want somebody else. Don't you think it's wise for us to talk about the epidemic of fatherlessness, the lie that America remains systemic racism, systemically racist, uh, and the need for school choice? 13 public high schools in Baltimore, 0% of the kids can do math at grade level. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. 53 public high schools in Chicago, 0% of the kids can do math at grade level. Meanwhile, the Democratic Party is opposed to school choice, while the party elites, whether it's Barack Obama or Gavin Newsom or, or Joe Biden, have their own kids in private school. It is wrong, and we need to talk about that. Mm. Larry Elder, why would why would somebody from our community vote for you, or why should they vote for you? Why should a black person vote for you? Because I'm telling the truth, and the truth oftentimes is unpleasant. Uh, it's not pleasant for me to be called the black face of white supremacy, as the LA Times did. It's not pleasant for me to be accused of being anti-black, as Tavis Smiley once called me, because I, I don't support reparations. By the way, Barack Obama never supported reparations. Nobody called him anti-black. We need to talk about what's going on. What's going on is the breakdown of the family. And most of the things we complain about downstream, whether it's crime or whether it's bad schools, the genesis is the breakdown of the nuclear intact family, and we don't talk enough about it. Do you agree that our community is hit harder with a lot of things that you just said, whether it is racism, whether it is getting loans, whether nope. it is getting entrepreneurship, whether it is education, whether it is all those things? You do understand that and agree with I, that, correct? I, I do, but much of it is either self-inflicted or because of policies that we have supported. 
Democrats that we have supported. I wrote a book called, it's coming out in, uh, in October, it's called As Goes California, My Mission to Rescue the Golden State and Save the Nation. It's about the one party rule in California. California has super majorities of Democrats in the Senate and in the House. And as a result, our schools are working are near the bottom. People are leaving California for the very first time. We have the highest uh, state income tax in the country. The average price of a home in California costs 175% above the national average, all because of these left-wing policies that are hurting the very people, black and brown people living in the inner city, that people on the left claim that they care about. Do you think slavery mm-hmm. was I, I self-inflicted? Or do you think Jim Crow segregation was self-inflicted? Or do you think, you know... Slavery was self inflicted. Of course, it wasn't self inflicted, but but uh, well, but, the, but, but there are a lot of there, a lot of people have bloody hands in slavery. Mm-hmm. For example, slavery could not have existed had it not been for African chieftains who were selling black slaves captured uh, in battle or captured through raids and selling them to European and Arab slavers. It could not have could not have existed without that. So everybody has dirty hands here. That's why reparations is such a foolish thing. If you're going to get reparations from the 5% or so of white people that have some sort of generational connection to slavery, and that's all there is, then you need to go back to Africa uh, and get money from African countries uh, that were involved in the slave trade and, the, and in the Arab slave trade. And by the way, the Arab slave trade was even worse than the European slave trade. 90% rate of attrition often making men and women walk on barefoot across the Sahara, and the men were castrated, uh, only about okay, five. So, 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 so if they go after the money from the other countries, then would you agree that it would be okay to go after the money from America? Is that when, your when problem it, when, with it? When, 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 when are you going to stop with this? Everybody has no, a grievance. I just asked a simple I'm question. Just, I'm, 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 answering, I'm answering your question. There, no, there, there's no end, there, there'll, be, there'll be no end to this because slavery has okay, been part of human history a, from the very beginning. Question. Okay, We'd be now, getting money. I've let you talk. Sir, I've let you talk. And every time I talk, you begin to talk and then you say, let you finish. So I asked you a very simple question. You said, if you're going to go after it in America, go after it in Africa. So if we all agree to go after it in Africa. Will you then agree to go after it in America? It's just a simple question. No, yes no, or no, no, I won't because it's a waste of time. We ought to be spending our okay, time no on, on education. Next question. Okay, you, okay, okay. You told me that, that I cut you off. Then I try to answer your question. You won't let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Larry. Thank you. It's a waste of time. We ought to be talking about working hard, investing in ourselves. Right now, as we speak, there are Haitians uh, in Haiti of lining up for a lottery to come into this country. Why? Because it is the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can go from nothing to something faster in America than any other country in all of human history. We ought to be talking about that. Let me just, one more point. 1997, Time Magazine and CNN hooked up together to do a poll on what black teenagers and white teenagers felt about racism. Mm -hmm. And both of them were asked, is racism a major problem in America? Both of them said yes. But then Time and CNN asked this question of of the black teenagers. Is racism a big problem? a small problem or no problem in your own daily life. This is 1997. 89% of them said small problem or no problem in my own daily life. In fact, twice as many blacks said failure to take advantage of available opportunities is a bigger problem than racism. That was 1997. Twice, 1997. Look it up. It's 2023, though. You think America's more racist now after the election and re-election of Barack Obama than it was in 1997? Yes, because of the election of uh, MAGA, Donald Trump, 100%. Yes. Really? Oh, absolutely. Well, how is it, how is it, uh, Charlemagne, that Donald Trump got 8% of the black vote in, uh, in 2016? He got 12% in 2020, a 50% increase. He got 20% of the black male vote in 2020. Uh, if MAGA is racist, how do you explain that, that Donald Trump substantially increased the percentage of black votes the Republican Party got? Sometimes people make points. So why are you running against Trump then, Mr. Elder? Yeah, so, I'm not, so, I'm not so, running against him. I'm running against Biden Harris. Any one of the Republican nominees we have would be better than what we have right now. I'm not running against him. I'm running to put forth the issues I just now mentioned that I've been talking about for the last few minutes. You know, I want to ask you about that. You know, after four indictments, 91 criminal charges, don't you think it would behoove the Republican Party to move on from Donald Trump? I think that the voters in the primary will make that decision. What do you think, though? I have no problem with, with uh, I thought Donald Trump did an extraordinary job uh, as president, especially for black people. Best economy ever. He did something about the borders. The people that are most hurt because of porous borders are va- black people living in the inner city because most of the illegal aliens have little or no education. They end up living in the inner city. They compete against uh, black people with high school or less for jobs. Mm-hmm. There are about a million fewer black people working than, than who, who would otherwise be working if it weren't for illegal alien labor. And illegal alien labor, according to a study done by the Civil Rights Commission, puts down with pressure to the tune of almost $2,000 per year in the salaries of black people living in the inner city. And Donald Trump gave us the most secure border we ever had. He also supported school choice. He also did the the First Step Act, which allowed about 5,000 mostly black men with long criminal uh, sentences, nonviolent, to have their sentences reduced an average of 70 months per. 
Uh, he pardoned Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion. Even Barack Obama didn't do that. Yeah, he think, did an extraordinary think, job for black people. I think you're innocent until proven guilty, but I feel like <clears throat> President Biden had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Uh, you know, President Obama had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Y'all would be telling them that they need to step aside and they shouldn't be running for president. Well, I wouldn't vote for Barack Obama or for Joe Biden in any case, no matter whether he had indictments or no indictments. I don't vote for tax and regulate liberals. Um, you're a conservative, right? Obviously. No question. What, imi- what initially made you gravitate towards being a conservative? I think it was my father. My father was a lifelong Republican, and my father always told my brothers and me the following. Democrats want to give you something for nothing. When you try to get something for nothing, you almost always end up getting nothing for something. And my dad, I told you about his background. He told my brothers and me that hard work wins. You get out of life what you put into it. You cannot control the outcome, Larry, but you are 100% in control of the effort. Before you moan or groan about what somebody did or said to you, go to the nearest mirror, look at it, and ask yourself, what could I have done to change the outcome? And finally, Charlemagne, my dad, told me, my brothers and me this. No matter how hard you work, how good you are, sooner or later, bad stuff is going to happen to you. How you deal with those bad things will tell your mother and me if we raised a man. I wrote a book about my father's life. It's called Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. It's about an eight-hour conversation he and I had uh, where at the beginning of the conversation, I thought my dad was harsh. He thought he spanked us too often. We had a, we had a belt. In those days, uh, from the South, you spank kids. Uh, and I thought my dad was way too harsh. And we had an eight-hour eight hour conversation, and by the time we ended, my dad got bigger and bigger and bigger, and Larry Elder got smaller and smaller and smaller, and I apologized to him. And it's a book that that's changed a lot of people's lives. It's called, as I said, Your Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. The paperback is called A Lot Like Me. Same book, but it's cheaper. Can you honestly say this is the Republican Party that you grew up on? This modern-day GOP? Yes. Uh, the Republican Party pretty much has always stood for low taxes, low regulation, uh, 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 peace through strength, not strength through peace, and strong borders, and still does. And, and when Donald Trump is gone, and he will be gone, mm-hmm. even if he gets reelected, if the day after he gets reelected, he's a lame duck, the party will still go on. The principles will still go on. However, I do believe that uh, many people in our party uh, have, have uh, spent and spent and spent so that Ronald Reagan, my favorite president, when he entered the Oval Office, Charlemagne, uh, when he left, the government was bigger. It got bigger under George Herbert Walker Bush. It got bigger under W. It got bigger under Donald Trump. And the only way to restrain spending is with an amendment to the Constitution to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP with exception for war and for natural disaster. Otherwise, we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me use the word unsustainable. Mm-hmm. That's the word Barack Obama used to describe the so-called entitlements. Uh, unsustainable was a word that Bill Clinton used to describe them. But nothing happens because if you run claiming you're going to reform Social Security or Medicare, the other side is going to accuse you of not caring about the sick, the poor, the elderly, and you are going to lose elections. That's why government gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need a law to restrain spending. Otherwise, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And for young people like you, uh, these programs are not going to be there. Mr. Elder, uh, I, I know a lot of black conservatives, and, and I, I I completely agree about the black family. I, I don't think anybody here objects to that. Don't I disagree just, about that at all. I, I think when you talk about ideology and then you mix in parties and then personalities, it gets kind of confusing. And, you know, you mention yourself not to moan and groan, you know, that as long as you work hard, all is well. And I think where the conflict is coming in is you did moan and groan about how the Republicans treated you. You did moan and groan about Governor Newsom and, uh, you know, asking for a recall. You did not leave that up up to the voters. You are moaning and groaning when it comes to Donald Trump and how he's being treated. So it just seems to be a hypocrisy. And I don't know if the message would land a little bit better if there was some fairness across the board uh, on Democrats and Republicans. I'm an independent, by the way, and I think both parties are trash. And I think all of us here, you know, see both sides. And that's the part that's just not landing for me. There seems to be an unfairness on both sides with you. Well, not too surprisingly, I don't agree with your analysis. How is it that I did not leave the recall to the voters? What do you mean by that? What do you you said you said you said I didn't leave the recall to the voters. No, no, no. I said you moaned and groaned about it. You you said it should be recalled. Correct. Correct. I said Gavin Newsom should have been recalled. Yes. Right. That's moaning and groaning. Well, actually, it's taking advantage of what's in the California Constitution, which is when a certain percentage of voters sign a petition to recall a politician, uh, there can be a recall vote. And there was one as there was in 2003. We recalled a governor then. And there was in 20, 2021 when I attempted to recall Gavin Newsom. That's part of our democratic process in California. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We we agree with that. I'm going to your statement when you said rather than moan about it a little while ago, you said rather than moan about it, I'm just going to keep doing the hard work. And so I'm just saying that technically is moaning well, about it because I, the governor is the side. I don't, so I don't, I don't, that's I don't, my I don't, point, I don't, sir. I don't, follow, I don't follow exactly what you're saying. I really it's don't. okay. I, I didn't okay. expect you to. Yeah, but I, it's, I'm, it's I'm, one I'm moment. A little, I'm a little slow one sometimes. Moment, 
one moment, yeah, we get it. Yeah. One moment you're complaining about the system and the next minute you're saying the system is, is fair. The next minute you're saying it's not fair. So that's what I'm saying. There just seems to be a double standard on you and the system, not wanting to be accountable for a system that do, black do people I, are not do, in charge of, by I, the way, do I, of not wanting to hold both sides accountable when it comes to the system. Do I believe Hillary was treated differently and Joe Biden treated differently than Donald Trump is being treated? Yes, I do. Is that an indictment about whether or not America is systemically racist? No, it is not. Those are two, they're, they're two, totally two different, two different things. things. Yes, you're, yes, you're they trying are. to merge the two, but they're two totally different things. I agree with you. The but two different things. No, no, we're, still, we're agreeing. We're agreeing the two different things. We're agreeing. No, we're agreeing the two different things. We're not agreeing that there's not systematic racism because we're not in charge of the system, sir. In case you okay, unfamiliar, okay, all right, all right. Can we, can we? Black can we, people can, have never been in charge of any system. Well, we're not actually, in, actually, 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 we, actually, we have been. Take Baltimore. No, we're, we're, no, we've never been in charge. May, of may any I finish? System. Any? No. We, tell me what financial system are black people in okay, charge of? Let, let's what take, healthcare system are black people in charge of? What government system are black people I'm, in charge I'm, I'm of? I'm ready to tell you. Prison system are no black people in charge. I'm about ready to tell you. I'm not talking about mayors. I already know that talk talking point, sir. I go on Fox News all the time as well. So let's not let's not go there with that. I said, what system have we created? Goodness. Have we implemented that we have been in charge of? Name one. Is this why you don't like talking to black women, Larry Elder? Wow. Um, ba Baltimore, <laughs> uh, Freddie Gray, a few years no, no, ago. No, no, no. That's mayors. I'm not talking. I said system. I'm Remember going to like tell you system. about the system if you allow me to finish my point. I'm not talking about somebody elected and doing a job, sir. I asked what system did we create? What financial system? Okay, let's system talk did about the create? system of one yeah, of the let largest. Him, let him say his point, thank you. Then. One of the systems of one of the largest uh, uh, cities in America, Baltimore. Uh, Freddie Gray died in police custody a few years ago. Uh, the mayor was black. The head of the police department was black. Number two. Uh, it's not in charge of the system, but go ahead. Number two person in charge of the police department was black. All Still of, not in all, charge of the all system. city council, Democrats, majority black. Six, Still not in charge of the system. Wow. Six, That's a of, position. six officers charged, three of them were black. A judge before whom two of the officers tried their case, found him not guilty, was black. Still uh, not the, in charge of the, the system. The uh, city uh, uh, intendant of public schools was black. The county superintendent of public schools is black. Uh, the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, is black, as was the president of the United States, was black. And yet, still not people, in charge of the system. So who's in charge I asked of the you a simple question, well, sir. Well, Wanda Sykes said uh, when, when, uh, when Barack Obama got elected, how are you going to complain about the man when you are the man? Now, from the president to the attorney general to the state attorney uh, to the mayor to the head of the police department uh, to the commissions of the schools in the city and in the county uh, to the majority of city council in that city, all of them are black. And you're still saying that we don't run anything? So who's in charge of the no, system? No, no, no. I, I said who created the system. I didn't say we didn't run anything. I, I challenge a lot of those black leaders, by the way. I said who, when we talk about the system, who, what black people have been in charge of any system? I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about a mayor. You know oh, so you're, 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 you're basically saying that they're just so, they're black faces that are still in correct. those positions, so, but they're so, still correct. being a part Similar of the system. Correct. Similar to you, Mr. So, Elder. So, you're so, a black face in, in a position in the conservative movement. They're they're just the same. They're just on the other side. I'm talking so about. Then, so then, so then, so then, so then, when Martin Luther King said in 1966, "I believe there could be a black president uh, in about 40 years' time," then it really doesn't matter whether there's one or isn't. No, it, it's yeah, one. It, so nothing it, nothing he, changes. He was, he was well, naive. He was naive then. Killed him as well. The, well, we know that the FBI and the CIA also killed him. That system. You realize that, correct? Wow. An individual killed him. Right. That was also a part of Pro Hotel through the system. Cointel correct? Yeah. Uh, not correct. Cointel Pro. N not, not correct. He was so killed. the FBI didn't have anything to do with it? The CIA didn't have anything to do with yeah, it? Edgar Hoover was definitely on Martin's ass. Like, come on. I, did, I didn't say he wasn't. Oh. Uh, Robert Kennedy is the one that approved the wiretaps. But to say that the FBI killed him? I mean, what's your evidence of that? Oh, no, I, yeah, that, that's, I, I, that's a pretty I, serious I, I, I charge. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Pretty serious charge. Yeah. Serious charge yeah, requires serious about the evidence. Yeah. What is your Mr. enforcement LBU? law proposal? Uh, it is to uh, allow states to set up commissions of retired judges and retired DAs to get rid of these soft on crime, George Soros back DAs that are allowing a bunch of bad people on the streets or not charging bad people to the full extent of the law. And the people that, by and large, that are hurt by these people are the very black and brown people living in the inner city. Hmm. There's a um, uh, Larry Krasner is a uh, George Soros back DA in Philadelphia. He's been impeached, but this Philadelphia State Senate wouldn't even take up the case. We've had two attempts to repeal a soft on crime DA in L.A. County, uh, and uh, it, it hasn't gone through yet. Uh, we've got a bunch of, in my opinion, this guy, Alvin Bragg, uh, he ran promising to get Donald Trump. And when he got in, he said the evidence wasn't there. And then one of the former DAs writes a book, accuses uh, Bragg of giving uh, Donald Trump a pass. And all of a sudden he brings counts against Donald Trump. I think it's unfair. 
Do you think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? <laughs> define fascism. Authoritarianism. De- define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump, who interprets the popular will. Uh, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a long article about uh, Barack Obama by one of my uh, mentors. His name is Thomas Sowell. He's an economist, he's a black conservative, still alive, right, 95 years old. And he wrote a piece in which he said a lot of people call uh, people like Barack Obama socialist. Socialism is government ownership of the means of production. Mm -hmm. Fascism is when the government allows you to own means of production, but government tells you what to do. And he said, frankly, technically, people like Barack Obama are fascists. That is to say, these are left-wing people telling you how to run your business, telling you what to sell, telling you what you can't sell. For example, in California, we have a governor named Gavin Newsom who recently said by the year 2035, no more sale of new gas-powered cars. How dare you? Uh, Most people don't want an EV. They like their own gasoline-powered cars, but now you're telling car dealerships they can't even sell them? What do you call that? But what about, you know, uh, when you tell women what to do with their bodies? Well, that is a moral issue. I happen to be pro-life, and I believe that... uh, um, that abortion is a sin. That's not telling women what to do with their body. That's expressing my opinion about whether or not it is right or it is wrong. For example, there is a guy right now behind bars in Philadelphia named Dr. Kermit Gosnell. Mm -hmm. He is an abortion doctor who performed late-term abortions. When I ask people who consider my position to be extreme, I ask them, tell me at what point do you believe pregnancy has gone so far that to terminate the unborn would would be homicide? And almost nobody will give you an answer. Uh, so in other words, what you're really telling me then is this guy, Dr. Kermit Gosnell, should be set free. He's a political prisoner. He was persecuted unfairly. If you won't, if you won't tell me when you think at what, what point a pregnancy uh, cannot uh, be terminated unless it's, unless, unless it's homicide, uh, then to me you're essentially allowing women to, to kill the unborn no matter how old that unborn is. And I, and I think that's wrong. The other thing, Charlemagne, real quickly on this issue, it'd be one thing if the pro-life community was not talking the talk and walking the walk. But there are literally thousands of pregnancy centers all over America, whether it's funding for uh, adoption services, funding for housing, funding for education, funding for job training, uh, to let women know they have alternatives. And every state will decide this. The government shouldn't be passing some sort of law one way or the other regarding abortion. Every state's going to decide that. I'm in California, which is a deep blue state. There have been two initiatives to restrict abortion. I voted in favor of them. I was overwhelmingly defeated. Uh, And when abortion has been put on the ballot in recent years, uh, the people that wanted abortion restrictions have lost. Mm -hmm. The American people pretty much have said... First-term abortions, they want them to be legal. Late-term abortions, they don't want them to be legal. I happen to disagree with that, but I'm willing to live in a society that has a different point of view than than I have on this issue. Can you have a real democracy if you're taking away people's power of choice? If you're taking away people's power to choose and not giving them any option. Well, if you consider it to be a if you consider it to be a crime uh, that abortion is a sin, in my opinion, you're not taking people to right to choose. You're making a moral statement about what's right and what's wrong. I mean, there's a lot of sins though. Sex before marriage is a sin. I'm sure you did some of that. Uh, as for the sins of my past, either the Lord has forgiven me or, or the statute of limitations well, has, 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 has run out. I'm, I'm making a they'll joke about that. A lot, a lot of people, of course, make mistakes, yeah. yes. Okay. And I think that people uh, should deal with the consequences of their actions. And, and if you uh, let people know their consequences to their actions, it will inform their actions and make them behave more responsibly. Any, anytime you allow bad behavior to continue, you're going to get more bad behavior, whether that's... So how does that apply to tra- President Trump then? Because you said that was a two-tier si- system that, because um, I don't, that's unfair. Because I, I, don't, so I, don't I don't believe Donald Trump... You don't he, think he did anything? I don't think he did anything wrong. No, I don't. I believe that he complained okay. about the election the same way Hillary did. Hillary, for four years, referred to the 2016 election as having been stolen her word, not mine. She called Donald Trump illegitimate, her word, not mine. Uh, Jay Johnson, who's Obama's DHS secretary, testified under oath that not a single vote tally was changed by the Russians. They tried, but they failed to change a single vote tally. 66% of Democrats believe the Russians changed vote tallies to get Donald Trump elected, even though Jay Johnson testified under oath not a single one was changed. That's the damage that people like Hillary and former President Jimmy Carter uh, and Stacey Abrams and Hakeem Jeffries and others have said for years referring to Donald Trump as illegitimate. A greater percentage of Democrats believe 2016 was stolen than we feel that way about 2020. But yet nobody calls them election deniers and nobody accuses them of undermining our republic. And they're not undermining our republic. They're complaining about an election. You have a right to do so. I know, I know you probably got to go. Uh, <coughs> have you ever heard of the term a uh, nigga wake up call? No. It is an incident where a person of color forgets that they are of color and are reminded rather brutally by an unexpected act of racism. Oh, have you brother. ever had any of oh, those? Oh, brother. I'm just asking. I'm just, have, 
You think you've ever well, had I, I'm acutely aware, Charlemagne, that I'm a black person, just as you are a black person. And when uh, Joe Biden insulted you by saying, mm-hmm. you ain't really black, we don't know whether or not you want to vote for me or vote for Donald Trump, uh, it seems to me that should have been a wake-up call on your part. How dare this guy come in here and insult you, a black man, and tell you you got to think a certain kind of way? I'm amazed that you weren't mad about that. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to say I, it upset me, just like I'm not letting you upset me. You know what I mean? I don't tend to get upset over things like well, that. But what I did say Well, well you just not talk not about, about a nigger wake-up call, and it seemed to me that that should have been a wake-up call on your part to have a white guy come in here who also said, by the way, uh, uh, about Mitt Romney— um, uh, uh, because he didn't want to put more regulations on Wall Street, going to put y'all back in chains. And Joe Biden has lied for decades about his civil rights record, claiming that he desegregated movie theaters and restaurants in, in Wilmington, Delaware, when he didn't any didn't do any of that. He lied and said that he tried to visit Nelson Mandela during apartheid South Africa. He did not. And he came in here and told you you aren't even black and let you think a certain kind of way. It seems to me that should have been a nigga wake-up call for you, but it wasn't, apparently. Yeah, I mean, no, for the record, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I, I, I didn't think, say you were. I, yeah, I think both. I don't know what trash. you are. I, I never yeah. even asked you about your party affiliation. Yeah, I'm just saying, you, but you are black. Absolutely. And, and to have a white guy come in here and tell you you have to say uh, think a certain kind of way, otherwise you quote ain't black. Wow. How should I have replied to him? You think? What I just now said. How dare you insult me and tell me I, I think as, as a human being, let alone as a black person. I don't tell you how to think, Joe Biden. How dare you come in here and tell me how, to, how I, I, I should think? I'm going to vote for Donald Trump if I want to vote for Donald Trump. And, and if I want to vote for Donald Trump, it does not make me not black. 20% of black people, black men, as I said, uh, voted for Donald Trump in 2020. Are they not black now? So only 80% of black people, black men walking around are really black, 20% are not, because mm. they voted for Donald Trump. How insulting is that? How condescending is that? Mm. I, I mean, you're probably right, but I didn't take it in that way. As well, I, I said, did. As I said to him in that moment, you know, it's just about me wanting something for my people. And I want to know what is he going to do for my people. And not only for my people now, how are you going to atone for the things you've done to my people? Right. That's it. Right. And this is a guy, uh, Joe Biden, who, when he first got into the Senate, hung out with segregationists, talked about how well, he, how well he got along with them, uh, talked about how he didn't want integration because of a jungle. Uh, this guy has made Absolutely. all sorts of insulting things to black people, and his policies right now are hurting black people. Inflation hurts the people at the bottom more than anything else. Letting a bunch of illegal aliens under, into the border are hurting black people more than anybody else, as I said earlier. He supports uh, opposes school choice when he has his own kids in private school. And we lost a year, almost two years of in-school education in California because of COVID that he supported. I mean, this guy has done monstrous things to black people and then for him to come in here and tell you how you ought to think as a black person it blew my mind as a person objectively who doesn't care about either party when i just take a step back and i just look at what everything that's happening i see one party that seems still committed to democracy somewhat and one party who's headed fast towards fascism that's just my personal opinion so who do you think i would vote for well who well, vote, well let's 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 talk let's talk about fascism since i, I assume you're talking about uh, election denying uh, in 2000, when George W. Bush won the election over Al Gore, uh, the Democrats, the first week of, of January 2001, tried to overturn the results in Florida. Uh, 2004, George W. Bush gets reelected. Uh, Democrats, including uh, Benny Thompson, the chair of the uh, January 6th committee, Jamie Raskin, a member of the January 6th committee, joined with 28 other House uh, Democrats and Senator Barbara Boxer to overturn the re- results in Ohio, claiming without any evidence that the Debo voting machine had been hacked. Uh, 2016, January 20, uh, January 2017, Democrats challenged more states uh, trying to get the election overturned that elected Donald Trump. Then Donald Trump challenged uh, the first week of January in 2021. Nobody accused them of undermining our republic. Nobody accused them of being fascist. They exercised whatever means they could to try to win the election. I want to remind you that Hillary Clinton advised Joe Biden during the 2020 election If it is a close election, quote, do not concede under any circumstances, close quote. Donald Trump used whatever legal means he could, advancing some novel legal theories to try to uh, stay in office, and he failed. But I don't blame him for trying. Yeah, but it's not just election denying. It's the disdain of women and fear of non-standard gender identities and sexual orientation. Disdain for women. It's the galvanizing of popular rage against cultural elites. It's nationalism based on dominant superior race and historic bloodlines. Like, there's a lot of things that Republicans are doing. Well, what about uh, about, uh, Joe Biden going to Howard University, as he did recently, giving a commencement speech, Charlemagne? And he said the number one threat to the homeland was white supremacy. Really? The anti The FBI said that. The Anti-Defamation League keeps track of how many people are killed by extremists, no matter the race of the extremists every year. Last year, there were 25. As I said, in 2020, there were 11,000 blacks who were murdered, almost all murdered by other people, not murdered by white extremists. It's a lie to say white extremists uh, is a big problem in America. It's a lie. It's what Democrats do to get black people well, angry. The FBI said that. It's what Democrats... Why fine, that fine, fine. 
Uh, I don't I don't agree with that. Mm. Uh, the number one threat to the homeland uh, is a large number of people who are engaging in criminal activity. Uh, and uh, what Democrats do is tell black people racism, racism, racism. They trot out David Duke or some other facsimile every four years to tell black people vote for us because, after all, we're the party of racial justice, social justice, and equity. And these dastardly people over there, these Republicans, are the party of Jim Crow and slavery, even though it was the Democratic Party that was the party of Jim Crow and slavery. So why should black people rock with the GOP then? Like, what are the reasons? Economics? Uh, I had Tavis Smiley and Cornell West on my radio show once, Charlemagne. And I told Tavis and, and Cornell West that under Ronald Reagan, black adult unemployment fell faster than white adult unemployment. Mm-hmm. Black Hispanic unemployment fell faster than did white uh, unemployment. Black teenage unemployment fell faster than did white uh, teenage unemployment. Black businesses were created at a rate faster. Uh, their revenues grew at a rate faster. And they both told me that I was wrong and that they would have the data on my desk by Monday. That was 15 years ago. I know the mail is slow, but it seems to me they should have given it to me by now. Uh, Again, Donald Trump presided over the best economy ever for black people, lowest unemployment, uh, and it seems to me the number one reason that most people vote is is because of the economy. We have had 40-year historic high in inflation. We've had gas prices that are now about 40% more than what they were uh, when uh, Joe Biden came into office, and we have about 7 million illegal aliens in our country, and the bulk of the suffering because of these illegal aliens will be born by black people living in the inner city. Would it so be those, fun those, those, are, those are three reasons alone not, not to vote for the Democratic Party and to vote for the Republican Party. And by the way, I'm not voting for a fishing buddy. It's not because I like Trump or like him personally. I'm voting for policies. And I don't really care whether or not uh, his, his personality offends people and he does bad tweets. Maybe it might be better for our, our society if he were more polite. I don't know. I don't care. I'm not voting for a fishing buddy. I'm voting for somebody to keep taxes low, keep regulations low, uh, to secure the borders and keep us out of unnecessary wars. Would it be fun to have money in a fascist country, though, to be black and have money in a fascist country? Or to be anything I, other well, than a white I don't, I don't. I don't agree this is a fascist country. It's always better to have money than not to have money. Mm. All right. Anything else, Tess? Well, I just just a simple question. Have the Republicans done anything uh, that you disagree with? Just out of curiosity. They spend too much. Uh, I think taxes are still too high. Uh, I think that um, uh, there are a lot of Republicans that support things like minimum wages. And by the way, uh, Milton Friedman, one of my favorite economists, said the minimum wage is perhaps the most anti-black law in the statute books, close quote. At one time, a black teenager was more likely to have a job than a white teenager until the minimum wage came along and kicked it up and up and up. So there are policies that the Republican Party supports I like minimum wage, some of them do, that I don't like. Uh, also, also kinds of li- licensing, um, ne- unnecessary licensing. I was at an Apple store a few years ago, and this black woman waited on me, and she was very sharp technically. I'm not very technically sharp, and I was very impressed. And I said, have you always been technically sharp? She goes, well, I'm not really. I, I, I'm just here because I want to uh, earn enough money to get a license to cut hair. I said, black hair? She said, yes. I said, you don't, don't know how to cut the black hair already? I have black uh, barbers in my family. Everybody learned how to cut hair on their own. She said, well, in California, you have to have a license uh, to get, uh, you have to have a, a, a license to get, open up a shop to cut hair. I said, how much does it cost? She said, $5,000. I said, you need to, to get a $5,000 license to learn how to do something you already know how to do? What is that? So a lot of the rules and regulations. System. Okay, system, fair, 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 to get fair, systems, fair, no fair, how, fair, no fair, matter how hard you work. Well, the system applies to both blacks and whites too, but fair enough, those systems ought to be struck down. Uh, and uh, so there are lots of things Republicans do that I don't. Well, it's not just cutting hair, you know that. You know they have to to train how to to learn with diseases and to make sure your clippers are clean and make sure certain things that you have to follow certain protocols so that you can be a barber so that you can make sure that the community is safe when you're doing these these protocols. Well, if if there weren't government protocols, there'd be other protocols. For example, there's something called the Consumer Reports. Uh, that's not government. And, they, and it comes out and it talks about cars and mm-hmm. what cars are good, what cars are safe. If government didn't do these kinds of things, entrepreneurs would step in uh, and they would have licensing. So there'd be a little sticker on the window when you go to a barbershop and, and it would say, I've been approved by so-and-so licensing board mm-hmm. or organization. Some of it's bullshit. 5,000 is too much though. But. There, there, are, there are all sorts of things that we would do if the government was not doing them. Mm-hmm. Do you have a black barber? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Just making sure. Uh, actually, actually, I have a black barber for 25, 30 years. Uh, he got cancer, and now uh, the person that owns the shop, who is uh, Latina, cuts my hair. Okay. I, I do want to ask you one final question. When did you? When do you think systemic racism ended? Since you said it don't exist anymore, when did it end? Um, I can't come up with a specific time, but uh, civil rights Neither act. Can we? <laughs> civil rights act of 1964, mm. uh, Brown versus Board of Education, the Loving versus Virginia Act that struck down. Uh, uh, race mixing. You couldn't, uh, in, for 13 uh, states, you couldn't marry a, a white woman. Um, 
Again, I think that when Barack Obama got elected, it was a big deal. Uh, uh, when Obama got elected, this is really important, he got elected with a little more than 52% of the vote. He walks into the Oval Office the third week of January. He had a 70% approval. Now, how can that be? How can 15% all of a sudden support this man? It wasn't because they wanted capital gains taxes raised, which Obama promised to do. It wasn't because of Obamacare, which Obama promised to do. It's because many Americans said, at the very least, he'll stop the nonsense that America remains systemically racist. And for eight years, in my humble opinion, he played race card after race card after race card. So when he entered the Oval Office, both blacks and whites thought race race relations would would get better. When he left, both blacks and whites thought they got worse. Why? Because he did things like the Cambridge police acted stupidly when they didn't. If I had a son, he looked like Trayvon. When what happened to Trayvon had nothing to do with his race. He embraced Black Lives Matter. Uh, He invited Al Sharpton in the White House over 70 times. Uh, He said that racism is in America's DNA. He said all sorts of things so that when he left, both blacks and whites thought race race relations got worse. Um, Right, but but sir, this is where the, and and we can just agree to disagree because you're mixing race relations and voters, what voters decided to do, who might just be very good people that decided to elect a black man, confusing with institutional system racism. Um, And those are just two totally different things. And it's okay if we just agree to disagree. Um, You know, I'm talking about structures, not what voters did or, you know, voters wanted to see better race relations. We're talking about structures, the same structures that you referenced several times that have also spited you. So uh, that's all Joe Joe Biden, for example, when Georgia reformed this law, said it was worse than Jim Crow. It's Jim Ego. More blacks voted in Georgia than ever before. The percentage of blacks increased. Uh, If the, the structure, how is it that the structure did not stop black people from voting in Georgia? Well, I'm not talking about voting, sir. I'm talking about and let, let just just to be fair, I, I think Joe Biden and what Joe Biden has did to African Americans, particularly with the war on drugs, uh, was one of the worst things that actually happened to black people. Just to put that on the record, he he too was a part of that system that I'm talking about. Democrats as well. I just try to stay balanced to say that that same system goes uh, it applies on both sides. Democrats and Republicans helped uh, with mass incarceration. Joe Joe uh, Biden led it, wrote it. So so we have no problem. Or I have no well, problem. Uh, condemning him as a Democrat for what he's done. I'm just talking about institutions versus relations are just two totally different things. And that's just where we, well, you know, just dis- disagree with that. And that's OK. Well, we didn't really get into mass incarceration, but most people who are behind bars are behind bars because they committed a violent crime against somebody else. And often the black people who are behind bars committed a violent crime against another black person. Uh, well, when I'm talking about mass incarceration, I'm not talking about violent crimes. I'm talking about nonviolent crimes, particularly the war on drugs. I was very clear I, in what I, I said. I, 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 agree, I, agree, I agree with you that, that I believe that uh, the drug problem should be dealt with as a health problem rather than a criminal justice problem. But most people are not behind bars uh, for using drugs or for dealing drugs. They're behind bars for having committed a violent act against another person. Sure, but that wasn't what I was talking about. I was very clear when I talked about Joe Biden writing the crime bill right. and mass incarceration with war on drugs to nonviolent offenders. So right. that's a different conversation. You're weaving the two together. So we just uh, just have a disagreement on institutions versus race relations, and that's okay. Well, well, in order for you to go 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 to jail, you have to commit a crime. If you walk down the street, my not name, always when you're black in America. Well, where are the class action lawsuits, Charlemagne? We have all these black lawyers. Uh, many black people uh, have gone to law school. Where are the class action lawsuits uh, claiming that a bunch of people are behind bars uh, illegally, wrongfully? Where are they? So you think everybody that's behind bars? I didn't bars say that. Behind bars I, I, I didn't say that. I, why don't you answer my question? Where are the class action lawsuits? Well, you got to need money to do class you action have, lawsuits. You have, you you've, had a, a, you've had a black attorney general, Eric Holder. Uh, you had back to back black attorneys general, Eric Holder and then Loretta Lynch. Why didn't they? release a whole bunch of, of people who are illegally behind bars. Why didn't they do that? And, had a black and, president. And I, criticize, and had a black and, president. and I criticized them as well, went mm-hmm. on record, because actually, you're right. Uh, he lied and said that he was going to fix the crack cocaine disparity. So I went on record. You're right. And guess what? Guess who he works for? The system. So he's just a black face that works for the system at the time. So again, we just disagree on systems and institutions versus black faces in high places. Well, the disparity has been has been rectified. Uh, now you go to jail for dealing powder as you do as you do for dealing crack, and at one time there was a disparity. Oh, you go to jail, but the, but the ratio's not the same. Well, because the dealers are not the same. Uh, for example, no. there, are, there, there are more white people behind bars for drunk driving than there are black people. There are certain categories no, of crime that whites drugs, commit. Mr. Le- Mr. Elder, you're going, you're first you're depends talking on, about Depends on the drug. More, more whites are behind bars for meth than, than, uh, than blacks are. You're just are. going all over the place, sir. We were talking about, it's very clear. You said drugs. It depends on the category of drug. Drugs. It depends okay. on the category of drugs. More whites are involved in meth right, than but blacks. I, I gave you the category that I wanted to talk about, and then you start talking about drinking. Crack you're cocaine. just all over the place, Mr. Elder, but it's okay. More blacks are involved in crack cocaine. More whites are involved in powder 
more whites are involved in mesk uh, than blacks depends on the category of the of the drug you're talking right. about. Right, and I was talking about a very clear category, and I gave you, I, I, I told you where I just criticized the black man who was in charge, and you okay. skipped over that and went right to talking about junk driving. Larry. So again, so sir, we I have no problem with criticizing black Democrats. We, we, we do that. Charlemagne does that all the time. It's just the imbalance of understanding that even black faces in high places, even including yours and Democrats, Republicans, just being fair across the board. That, that's all. Well, 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 that, 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 to me, that, to me, that to me basically is no different than what Joe Biden just did with Charlemagne, which is to tell me as a black person, I got to think a certain kind of way. Otherwise, I'm not. Black. And I didn't like and I didn't like that. either. Well, you just did. I didn't it. like that. either. You just did. You like call me a either. black face as if I'm supposed to think a certain kind of way. No, you just I said did. black face. I said black face in high places. I said they're everywhere. You're a black face. You're in a high place. You're running for president of the United States. That's a high place. You are a black face. Correct. I said so there's black face in high and high places on both sides. So it's just about being fair for me on both sides. I've mentioned. I, I agree. Three or four I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, I mentioned several Democrats that I have a problem with. Several, mm-hmm. several, several, including Joe Biden. So you don't have to sell us on that. We get that. I'm just saying it also happens on the Republican side. That's all. And black conservatives agree with a lot of your message, Mr. Elder. But when you're when you're not balanced across the board, it just kind of lands flat. That's all. Who's um, who's cocaine? Do you think it was in the White House? Since we're talking about drugs. I have no idea. All I know is that it seems to me it should be scary that the that Secret Service has closed the investigation without identifying a suspect. Mm-hmm. What other kind of stuff go, goes in and out of the of the White House without anybody knowing about it? But I have no idea. I just think it's bizarre that the investigation all of a sudden got closed that fast. And you think criminal charges should be brought against President Biden, right? I think there certainly should be an investigation about the pay for play stuff that we're hearing. Uh, the IRS whistleblowers are saying that the they were told to uh, stand down in their investigation. Uh, I think there's a double standard going on, as I said earlier. For example, Donald Trump has been indicted for document possession. There is a special counsel investigating uh, uh, Joe Biden for document possession. But his defenders are saying, well, Joe Biden, unlike Donald Trump, turned over the documents uh, readily when they were found out to have them. And if that's the case, why is the investigation still taking so long? Mm. Uh, Tell them how they can support your campaign. LarryElder.com. I need $1 from 40,000 individuals, even if you want somebody else, to talk about some of the issues that Charlemagne and I have been talking about for the last several several minutes. I can get them front and center. So LarryElder.com, $1, 40,000 individuals. I will see you on August 23rd in Milwaukee. All right, it's Larry Elder. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.